This is our last video on our respiratory block, and this video is going to be on lung cancers. Lung cancers. And this cancer causes the most cancer-related deaths. It's a cancer that kills the most people, so it's very important that you know it. All right, some signs of lung cancer include things like weight loss, which is just a general cancer symptom, uh, cough, hemoptysis, and you'll want to take a really good history and look at the risk factors that patient has. All right, some risk factors will include things like smoking. That's the most easily recognizable risk factor. So are they a smoker? We talked about some other ones like asbestos ex exposure, and then there's a cool one, there's a cool one, radon. Radon is a natural radioactive substance that's released from uranium. And so it's seen in basements, seen in mines and caves. I had this cool question, uh, it talked about a coal miner who developed lung cancer and they wanted to assess what his risk were. And a lot of times people will jump to coal. And we talked about it in our talk on pneumoconiosis, coal doesn't increase the risk of cancer. He was exposed to radon. All right, so just keep radon in the back of your mind whenever you're thinking about risk for lung cancer. So a patient comes in, has some risk, has that cough, has a hemoptysis, has that weight loss. What's the next step? Well, you can do a chest x-ray and try and look for a nodule, look for that lung cancer. And you might see that little nodule. Now, not all nodules are lung cancer, so you don't get scared. Some are things like hematomas. And by definition, hematomas are just overgrowth of normal tissue. All right. How can you tell that from a hematoma? Well, you can do a biopsy. Biopsy. And that will definitively tell you whether or not the patient has lung cancer. For our, our purposes here, let's just say the patient does have lung cancer. And then what do you do? Well, you, you'll need to stage it, see if it's spread, all that stuff. Check the lymph nodes. Uh, lung cancer really likes to spread to the breast because it's close. Uh, your bone, especially your spine, because it's close. One thing that you should know is that it likes to spread to your adrenals adrenals that's uh odd one out not a lot of people think about that. So why would you right why would it spread to the adrenals no one really knows the mechanism the lymphatics are linked your lungs and your adrenals so that might be a mechanism but just know that it likes to spread to your adrenals okay and if lung cancer wasn't bad enough you can have a lot of complications outside uh kind of secondary to that lung cancer i mean the lung cancer can grow and you can have a mass effect. So let's just talk about some complications of that lung cancer. Complications. You can have a mass effect. Basically, it gets so large it starts to compress on nearby structures. It can compress on your superior vena cava. We call that SVC syndrome. And when you compress your on your superior vena cava, you can't drain blood from your upper body. So your upper blood, your upper body gets full of blood, gets congested, gets edematous. All right, upper body swelling. You have a raised JVP, yeah? You can't drain that blood. JV distension. And if you actually push on their, on their body, it'll blanch, it'll blanch. Okay, so you can compress the SVC. You can compress a nearby nerve, the recurrent laryngeal nerve. And when you compress that, you get hoarseness, recurrent, Laryngeal equals hoarseness. You can have a cancer at the top of your lungs. We call those pancos tumors. So right, superior lung. And the classic one that I learned way, way back, probably like my fourth week of med school, <clears throat> it can compress on your sympathetic ganglion that are down here and cause horners. So right, sympathetic ganglion. And by blocking that, you get the triad ptosis, meiosis, and hydrosis. And hydrosis. I actually saw one patient with this, lung cancer, ptosis, meiosis. I couldn't assess the anhydrosis. I don't know anyone that can. But I, I just really think this is a classic one that everyone should know. So Horner syndrome, one, one thing that people don't usually think of is thoracic outlet syndrome. Thoracic outlet syndrome. What is that? Well, here's your lungs. Is encased by your ribs, and under your first rib, the, your brachial plexus and a bunch of blood vessels go through. So if this is your first rib, 
then a bunch of vessels and your brachial plexus go through. And if you have a tumor here, you can compress on your brachial plexus, you can compress on those, those blood vessels. And so you'll have pain in your arm, in your shoulder, you'll have, you'll start to atrophy, right? Because you're not getting that blood supply. So I'll write pain in shoulder slash arm atrophy. All right, and weakness. That's thoracic outlet syndrome. So that tumor growing and growing can cause mass effect, can compress on all these things and cause secondary complications. There's one more secondary complication, and that's just perineoplastic syndromes. These mutated cells love to release cytokines, love to release hormones, and can cause perineoplastic syndromes. And we'll talk about the specific ones in a bit, okay? That is the overview of lung cancer. The overview of lung cancer. Now let's talk about the specific types of lung cancer. You can break lung cancer into two categories. Two categories. Small cell lung cancer. And then there's non-small cell. We'll talk about non-small cell first. The first one is gonna be squamous cell carcinoma. Squamous cell. Squamous cell carcinoma really likes to cavitate in your lungs. So on chest x-ray, you, you might see that cavitation. So right, cavitation. And then when you biopsy, what do you see? You'll see keratin pearls. These swirls of keratin. And you should know that all squamous cell cancers have keratin pearls. The squamous cell cancer of your skin has uh, keratin pearls. Any squamous cell has those keratin pearls. Whenever you see those ke keratin pearls, squamous cell cancer should be an easy pickup, easy points. You also see something called intercellular bridges. So in between the cells, you have these little bridges. So all right, intercell intercellular bridges. And since we talked about perineal plastic syndrome, squamous cell carcinoma really loves to release PTH related peptide. And that does all the things PTH does, um, breaks down bone, increases calcium. So these, pati these patients have hypercalcemia, all right, increased PTHRP. That's squamous. Let's talk about the next one, large cell. Why do you think they call it large cell? Because it has very large cells. A great picture will be in my notes, these really large, really mutated pleomorphic cell, large cell carcinoma. So it's right, large cell. Speaking of paraneoplastic syndromes, it really likes to release beta HCG. And that can mess up with your hormones. Um, in men, you get gyno, gynecomastia. In women, you get galacteria. Galacteria. <clears throat> Why? Um, that's more for our, res our reproductive block. So if you want to know why, look in my reproductive video. If you're curious, I'll just give a short rundown. HCG is released, has two subunits. It has a beta subunit, which is what we measure. That's why we call it beta HCG. And it has an alpha subunit. And that alpha subunit is structurally similar to like LH, FSH, TSH. And being structurally similar, it can really mess with our sex hormones. So that's why it causes gyno and galacteria. <clears throat> you can have adenocarcinoma, and they love adenocarcinoma. Why do they love adenocarcinoma so much? Because it's not related to smoking. These are, yeah. We said a big risk factor is smoking. So you'll have a patient that's not smoking, thinks they're doing fine, and then they get lung cancer. And they're just saying, doc, I wasn't smoking. How could I get lung cancer? So they say, not related to smoking. If it's not related to smoking, the patient wasn't smoking, how could they get lung cancer? Well, it's related to the activating mutations of oncogenes, proto-oncogenes, genes that rev up your cell cycle. By activating these, you rev it up more and more, you can get cancer. These include things like CRAS, like EGFR, like ALK. Be able to at least know them well enough to recognize them on, on an answer choice, okay? It is not related to cancer. You cannot stress that enough. And whereas most lung cancers are seen more in men, this one is seen more in women. So the epidemiology of adenocarcinoma, they love to test. They love adenocarcinoma. 
What do you see on histology? Why do you think they call it adeno? That means glandular. So you'll see those glandular um, cells. So right, glandular. And they're mucin positive. Mucin positive. Now there's a special subtype. There's a special subtype called bronchio alveolar. And these come from a lot of cells, one of them being your clara cells. Can you tell me what your clara cells do? Pause the video, tell me what they do. This is our last video, so we're gonna recap a lot of what we've learned previously. Can you tell me what your clara cells do? Okay. And they call it bronchial alveolar because it grows along your alveolar wall. It kind of thickens your alveolar wall thickens your alveolar wall. And if you do a chest x-ray, it looks a lot like interstitial pneumonia. A great picture will be in my notes. Why does it look like that? Didn't we say interstitial pneumonia it affects the interstitium, the interstitial space outside your alveoli? Kinda, kinda like the same mechanism, right? Except this one's cancer. So chest x-ray will look very, very similar. Look very similar. Let's talk about our fourth and last non-small cell lung cancer. This one is called your carcinoid tumor. Carcinoid tumor. Don't carcinoid tumors usually happen in the gut? They release, release serotonin, gives that diarrhea, gives that all that stuff. You're absolutely right. But carcinoid tumors can also appear in your lungs. Okay? They're from the neuroendocrine cells of your lungs. But they function the same way. They release serotonin. Release serotonin in your lungs and causes uh, wheezing. Causes wheezing. Wheezing. causes wheezing. Why does it cause wheezing? We talked about some vasoconstrictors of your lungs, like endothelin, when we talked about pulmonary hypertension. So we're recapping some previous stuff. So we talked about endothelin. Another vasoconstrictor is serotonin. All right, so you release too much serotonin, you get too much vasoconstriction, you get wheezing. You get wheezing. Grossly, it'll look like a polyp. And microscopically, anytime you see neuroendocrine cells, it's, just, it's these really small blue cells. And all neuroendocrine cells stain chromogranin A positive. That's something all neuroendocrine cells have, chromogranin A positive. I want you to keep that in the back of your mind. Those are your non-small cell lung cancers. Let's talk about your small cell lung cancer. Small cell lung cancer is associated with smoking, as with everything except for adeno. It's also associated with a mutation in the oncogene LMYC. And this one I found really easy to remember because L as in lung, so lung MYC. And this is a neoplasm of your neuroendocrine cells. Hey, speak of the devil. In particular, your Kolchiski cells. Kolchiski cells, that might be our second video we had together. Our Kolchiski cells. Bring it all back for our last video, awesome. And microscopically, what do neuroendocrine cells look like? Small blue cells. And you can stain them, and what are neuroendocrine cells positive for? Chromogranin A, great. Chromogranin A. They have a special thing, a uh, special marker, that way you don't get confused, and that is neuron specific NLAs. What the heck is that? Well, you don't actually need to know this, it's not gonna be tested, but if you're curious, NLAs is an enzyme in your glycolysis pathway, and this NLAs is specific to neurons and neuroendocrine cells. Okay, so they call it neuron specific NLAs. Now your small cell lung cancers being from neuroendocrine cells really, really likes to release a ton of hormones. It's associated with a ton of perineoplastic syndromes. It can release ACTH, and when you have too much ACTH, what do you call that? It causes Cushing's, right? Cushing's, and all the signs of Cushing. Pause the video, list, hmm, list five signs of Cushing's. Five signs of Cushing's, how about that? That's a good mental exercise. Can release ADH, what do you call too much ADH? SIADH. All right, have you done our renal block? Pause the video, tell me everything you know about SIADH. All right, so you can make a step-like question from this. Patient comes in, lung cancer. Um, 
you do a biopsy, you see small blue cells that are chromogranin A+, plus, uh, neurospecific enolase, and then the patient is hyponatremic. Why is the patient hyponatremic? SIADH. Something cool, you can release antibodies that attack your own body, can attack your, your brain, causing encephalitis, or encephalitis. It can attack your neuromuscular junction, cause weakening and Lambert-Eaton. It attacks the calcium, the presynaptic calcium channels. What does that mean? Let's draw our neuromuscular junction out. Here's your axon. It'll depolarize, and when it depolarizes, calcium will influx and release your vesicles full of acetylcholine, right? Your acetylcholine will attach to your acetylcholine receptor, and that will cause your muscles to depolarize and then do whatever muscles do. Um, that's our MSK block, we don't have to worry about that. You have something that can destroy your acetylcholine receptors, that's myosinus gravis. And now you have something that can destroy your calcium, your presynaptic, the axon that's before the synapse, your presynaptic calcium channel. And when you destroy that, you can't release acetylcholine, your muscles don't work, you get weakness. I had a great question on this, and I remember it very well because I got the question wrong. Um, patient had lung cancer, all the signs of lung cancer, cough, hemolysis, nodule, blah, 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 chromogranin A+, plus, neurospecific enolase, uh, and then developed muscle weakness. What was the mechanism behind that? He had started to develop antibodies against his presynaptic calcium channel. And I got that question wrong. So hopefully you don't get that question wrong either. Now that you know. That is small cell lung cancer. That's all I want to say about that. And our last cancer actually doesn't fit in this category. And I wanted to discuss it last because it kind of recap some more of our previous videos. All right, so this, this video is gonna be a nice recap of our, our respiratory block, and that is mesothelioma. Mesothelioma. What's mesothelioma associated with? If you said asbestos, great. Uh, let me know, tell me everything you know about asbestos exposure. I'll pause the video, let you do that. Hopefully you said things like ferruginous bodies, hopefully you said things like it affects the pleura, Causes pleural plaques. Pleural plaques. Okay. And then it can cause effusion, pleural effusion. You know what I'm going to ask you. Tell me everything you know about pleural effusion. All right, what are the labs you find? Is mesothelioma pleural effusions transudate or exudate? If you said exudate, you're absolutely right. And sometimes it can be bloody. That is not a good sign. You know you're dealing with something bad if you have some bloody fluid, okay? So it can cause those pleural plaques, can cause pleural calcifications, and you can see that calcification microscopically. You'll see these concentric rings of calcium, and calcium stains this really deep, beautiful violet. So this really deep concentric ring. We call those somoma bodies. Somoma bodies. It also has some markers that you should know cytokeratin and calretinin. That's it. Really just a few facts, really just a few facts you need to know for each cancer and you should be golden. I'm gonna do a little quick recap, a little quick recap uh, on some key facts that they want you to know. Sometimes they want you to know which cancers are centrally located which means kind of down your central bronchi, so really close, and which are peripheral, more spread out, more toward the outside, toward your terminal bronchi, toward your alveoli, more towards the outside, more peripheral, okay? The ones that are central are the ones that start with S, so squamous and small cell. That's it, that's all you need to know. And which, which lung cancers stain chromogranin A positive? That'd be your neuroendocrine cells. Um, which ones are those? Carcinoid, small cell. Last but not least, perineoplastic syndromes. 
We talked about a few of them. How do you keep them all in order? We talked about squamous, releasing PTHRP, causing hypercalcemia. I like to write it as squamous with a CA. And that way you can remember the hypercalcemia. Large cell causes large breast. Easy way to remember um, gynecomastic, lactory, all that stuff. So these are crude memory aids, but they, they really help me. And then small cells, everything else. So if you see anything that's not these two, then you know it's small cell, okay? You know it's small cell. That does it for lung cancer. That does it for our respiratory vlog. Thanks for, thanks for a great vlog. Hope I see you in the next one. Thanks.